Bring me a little water, Sylvie. Bring me a little water. This video shows you how to burn those MP3 files that you've downloaded onto a CD. This is particularly useful if you want to sing along not next to your computer, but perhaps using your stereo system at home, or if you've got a CD player in your car so that you can practice your parts while you're driving to and from work. This video shows you how to do it using the free iTunes software. There's plenty of other software out there that allows you to burn CDs, but since iTunes is free and very easy to use, that's the software that this video uses. Now, if you don't already have iTunes on your computer, simply go to www.apple.com slash iTunes and you'll see this page or a page very similar. You can see there's a big free download button, so I'm going to click on that. And that will then take you to a new page where it's going to ask you to fill in your email address you can actually choose to not fill in your email address. You can untick those boxes and not put your email address in here and then click download now. I'm on Internet Explorer at the moment, so this is the option that it gives me. But if you're using Firefox, you'll get a very similar option to either run or save the software. It doesn't actually really matter in this particular case, but I'm going to click Run, so as soon as it's finished downloading, it will also start installing. Obviously at this point, there's going to be a delay while you download the file, so go and make yourself a cup of tea and come back when it's finished. Once the file has finished downloading, you'll see an option to run straight away. So I'm just going to click Run and it's going to prepare to install. If you're using an earlier version of Windows, I've got Windows 7, you might find that some of these prompts are a little bit different, but they shouldn't be very different. So we're just waiting for it to install now. It says it's preparing to install. And you can see now it says welcome to iTunes. I'm just going to click next. I'm sure if you've installed software before, you know that generally you just keep clicking next until everything's happy. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about these options for creating shortcuts and the language. For me, it's chosen English United Kingdom. You might prefer to have that as Australia. And I'm just going to click Install. And it's going to do a little bit of advertising while it installs. Uh, you'll probably get this a warning that it's going to make changes to your computer and, of course, the changes that it's installing iTunes. So I'm just going to say yes to that. And now it will probably take another few minutes to install. So you can uh, drink that cup of tea that you made earlier, if needs be. When it's finished installing, you'll get this little congratulations banner and you can click finish. You can also close uh, Internet Explorer or whatever software you use to download iTunes with now. And you might see in the background, because iTunes is now running for the first time, a license agreement. Of course, make sure that you read all of this text, as I'm sure you do whenever you install any software. Explains your legal rights with that software. I'm joking, nobody reads it. And then iTunes should set itself running for the first time. If it doesn't, or if you need to open iTunes at a later date, you'll of course find it under your Start menu. If you've used it recently, you can see that it's there at the top of the Start menu, but you can also go to All Programs, which is quite similar in earlier versions of Windows. And from All Programs, you should be able to find an Apple group. My computer's struggling at the moment because I'm running Windows and Mac OS at the same time, so I apologise that it's a little bit slow. Uh, OK, so I've run... Um, I've opened the Start menu, I've gone to All Programs, and you can see that there's a folder in there called iTunes, so I can open that and run iTunes from there as well. So that's how you'll get to it if you didn't put the shortcut on your desktop. I did leave the shortcut option on my desktop, so I've got it there, right there on my desktop. 
Okay, the very first time that you run iTunes, you get lots and lots of information and tutorials. These are useful to watch if you want to do more with iTunes than just the one thing that we're going to learn how to do. But I'm going to close that for now. And you can see here now that I've got uh, iTunes up and running right there. So what we're going to look at now is how to put the files that you've downloaded into there and burn them onto a CD. So I'm just going to move iTunes to the left of the screen and I'm now going to open up a Windows Explorer window. If you're running Windows 7 you can do this simply by clicking on the default shortcut to Windows Explorer which is here. If you're running an earlier version of Windows or have removed that shortcut you can go to the start menu and then you can go up to either computer or documents. It doesn't really matter either way because both have a shortcut to the downloads folder. Now by default both Internet Explorer and Firefox, the current versions, download all files that you download to your downloads folder and in Windows 7 that is a short, uh, there's a shortcut to it here under favorites. So if I click on downloads you can see the two mp3 files that I've already downloaded. If you've got an earlier version of Firefox or Internet Explorer you might find that it downloads to the desktop in which case you'll find the files that you've downloaded of course on the desktop. So once I've got that folder open I can see those files. I need to be able to see those files and iTunes at the same time because I want to put them from here into iTunes. Now this is very simple. We could drag them straight onto the library but I'm going to combine the importing with the burning all at one go to make it as easy as possible. So down at the bottom left hand corner of iTunes you can see a little plus button and when I hover my mouse pointer over it it says create a playlist. So I'm going to click that playlist button and I'm going to call it something like choir music and then I'm going to press enter. Now I've got a choir music playlist. You can see at the moment that there's nothing in it. It's just telling me what I can do with that playlist. So now I'm going to drag my MP3s into the playlist. I can drag them one by one or I can click on the first one if I've got a whole folder full of them and then hold down shift on my keyboard and click on the last one and that selects both of them at the same time. I can drag them then over into here and let go and you can see that they've been added. Now if you're not completely sure you can double click on those. It's a bit silly here that I've burnt both a soprano and an alto part because it's unlikely that you'll be learning more than one part for the same song unless you've got a particular vocal skill that nobody's heard of yet. But anyway, for this instance you probably would want to have the full version with all of the parts and uh, the version that you're going to be singing. And when you finish putting all of the parts in there, to burn your CD you're going to uh, click here, right click sorry, on the name of the playlist. So I've right clicked on the words choir music and choose burn playlist to disc. Now I haven't put a CD in yet so when I click on that you can see here it confirms what are you going to burn an audio CD which means that it will play in any CD player so that's definitely the option that we want to go for. There's a, uh, a gap between songs that I can turn off or leave on, doesn't really matter, and then click burn and at that point it's going to go and look for a burnable CD. You, know, you can see that I haven't put one in so it's flashing. Please insert a blank disc. So at that point I'm going to push a blank CD into my CD player and it'll probably be a bit of a hesitation because I'm running two operating systems at once. Oh no, it looks fairly happy, it's going to start burning. Now if you've never bought blank CDs before, they're known as CDRs, that's CD hyphen R. Good, you can see up the top now that it is burning. Uh, good places to go and buy CDRs are places like Officeworks where you can buy bundles of 50 or 100 very cheaply. Uh, but you can even get them at the supermarket nowadays, a little bit more expensive but not too much more. Now once that's finished it will play a few tones for you and tell you that it's uh, done and you can take it out and uh, go and put it in your car stereo or whatever. Of course if you want to burn more than one copy because you want to keep uh, several around the house 
uh, then you can again right click on the playlist choir music once it's finished you'll get that option again to burn the playlist again uh, as the choir adds more repertoire you can download it and you can drag it into this playlist so that therefore you've got a CD with all of your music on or if you feel that you only need the new songs you can simply create a new playlist for any new songs that the choir adds by clicking the plus button at the bottom left again and creating another playlist. Now it says here that it's finishing burning my disc. What iTunes does is that it actually reads the disc and checks that it's got all the same songs as the playlist on it and then it's going to play those lovely tones and will be finished. So I'll just let it do that. There we go. And we're done.